church this morning. I don't have a lot of announcements to start with, other than we do have a breakfast to follow. Feel free to stay and eat as much as you want. They've been up early. I saw them pull up here at like 5, 6 in the morning, so they've been cooking. Are there any other announcements, prayer requests, things from the congregation we need to cover before we get further into our service? Yes, Abigail. Uh, today, the church will be singing a song after announcements. Thank you. Yes, you are right. Today, the children will be singing a song after announcements, and I also have a short lesson for you. <laughs> Okay, very good. What I'm going to do then is call those kids up. We'll open with their song. I think they're singing one, two, three, Jesus is alive. Yeah. All right, come on up, kids. <laughs> Do you know the name of these 
wait flowers? Here, let's grab one so we can get it closer. Have you ever seen oh. one of these before? Blur it out! A white lotus. Nope, it's not a white lotus. <laughs> I don't even know what that would be. <laughs> you know what this, Penny? Have you ever seen a flower like that before? No, you haven't? Hmm. Well, what shape is it? Kind of a triangle. It looks like a cone. Looks like a cone. It like a Does it look like a musical instrument? Oh, it looks like a trumpet. Mm. Yeah, so it's kind of a trumpeting flower, but it's not a white trumpet. It's a lily. <laughs> and I'm so glad you noticed its shape because we use lilies to announce the resurrection of Jesus. You can remember these lilies by that trumpet shape. This is a good way to say, hey, I know what this means. I know who it points to. And you see there's lots of lilies around today, don't you? Well, when you get back to your pew, flip to the back of your bulletin, you'll see this big cross, and you'll see a bunch of names listed. People have purchased all these lilies in memory and honor of their grandkids, people that have passed away, because they want to remember them on the resurrection day. Today we celebrate that we have life forever and ever, because guess what, these flowers come back every year, again and again and again, and we get to celebrate the fact that we have life eternal because of Jesus today. So remember these flowers, and think of those people who have gone before you, but also think of the fact that you've been given the greatest gift of all today. Any questions or comments? Okay, should we pray? Go ahead. Did everybody get an Easter present this morning? Yeah, would you like to share? <laughs> no, they don't want to share. We'll tell later over in the fellowship hall. We'll pray. Yes. So, um, I got the flower store thing. It's kind of like a big. We're making cheese time. That sounds awesome. What are trying to make before? It's a pot. I know Paw Patrol. Oh, I know all about it. Great. How about we pray and we'll thank God for those gifts this morning and everything he's given us. Let's fold our hands and bow our fold, fold our hands and bow our heads. Jesus, we thank you for every gift, whether it be an Easter basket from the Easter Bunny, Paw Patrol, candy, those adventures where we're going to go out this afternoon and look for eggs with family. Lord, we thank you for every day you've given us because each of them points to eternity. We thank you, Lord, that you give us these days with our family and have promised that we will have them forever in heaven with you because of Jesus. This day he has been risen. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys for coming up. I think you need another round of applause. confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sin to God our Father, imploring Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgive the iniquity of my sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. At this time, please take a moment of silence to reflect on your life, sin, and need for forgiveness.
Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess to you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Therefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Most merciful God, you have given your only Son to die for us. Have mercy on us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins. By your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will, and true obedience to your word, so that by your grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. us this Easter morning that in his mercy our almighty God has given his son to die for you and for his sake your sin is forgiven. To those who believe he gives the power to become children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the almighty and merciful God grant unto you that are penitent pardon and remission of all your sin, time for amendment of life and the grace and comfort of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We'll now turn together to page 138 and continue with the Kyrie and the rest of our worship service this morning. <coughs> Thank you. 
the version on page 149. <laughs> Let us pray. And we're praying the prayer of the day. This is found on the inside of your bulletin, page 3, if you'd like to pray with us. O oh God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him in all his redeeming work. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And please be seated for this morning's lesson. first reading is from Isaiah 25, 6 to 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well-defined. Well and he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let's read Psalm 114 responsibly. When Israel went out from Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange language, Judah became his sanctuary, Israel his dominion. The sea looked and fled, Jordan turned back. The mountains sit like rams, the hills like lambs. What ails you, O sea, that you flee? O Jordan, that you turn back? O mountains, that you sit like rams, O hills like lambs. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turns the rock into a pool of water, the flint into a spring of water.
Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us when we went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going farther, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were open, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it before them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. You see that our sermon title is fairly simple this Easter Sunday morning. I asked the question, would you recognize him? (coughs) Well, we're church people. We're here on Easter. Of course we would, wouldn't we? But we've all played with that idea of if Jesus were to walk into the world today, I'm not sure we would know who he is. Have you ever had an experience like that where you didn't recognize the blessing standing right there before you? especially in the moment. More so, you saw it as something terrible. We talked about this on Good Friday. There's two ways to hear the Holy Scriptures. One is with faith and one is without. We have the example of an adult saying, I don't get why Good Friday is good. But then the children said, of course it is. Jesus died for my sins and I have eternal life because of it. The same thing seems to happen here on Easter Sunday with Jesus, the disciples, and even us today. He's risen already. He appeared to the women at the tomb and garden, called by name, said Mary. And still people are like, is this really the guy? doesn't seem like it. He disappeared again. He keeps vanishing every time he shows up and says something, then he's poof, gone. Can we really rely on him? You see that they're saying, three days have passed and this guy said he was going to come back from the dead. Why hasn't he shown up yet? And they're asking these questions standing right there in front of Jesus. They don't recognize him in their presence. 
They're on the road to Emmaus, and he begins to explain to them all of the scriptures, and they still can't see him. It says in their disbelief, they still had joy. Can you grasp this in your own life? We hear about Jesus, we talk about him, we proclaim his name all the time, but there's that little bit of disbelief in our head, and we try to maybe mask it with joy. One of the hardest questions my six-year-old asked me once, she's seven now, she goes, Dad, you know, I believe in Jesus, but my head always tells me that I don't. She's not the only one who struggles with faith like this. We as adults do this also, and you see it again reflected in the disciples as Jesus not only appears on the road, but he sits down and eats with them. He reminds them again of all of his promises, where they came from, Old Testament, to where he stands in that moment. Again, they can't see him. When's the last time maybe you missed Jesus appearing right in front of you? I think I have to confess in my own life all the time. We get this mindset about church and faith and country and culture and community that everything is on the decline. We look around us and we think, wow, everything is getting horrible, it's getting worse. Don't have children, don't bring them into the world. Mountains and foothills, please fall on us. But is that really the promise we've been called to? Again, it goes back to that balance of do you read the scripture, do you hear it with or without faith? For some reason, as we grow older, we tend to rely on our knowledge, what we see, our experience, success, the things that work. And you know, on Easter Sunday, I feel really good because this room is full of people. But I can be deceived. These eyes can tell me the wrong thing because if you don't hear Jesus coming from my mouth this morning, you are in the wrong place. If you don't hear that he's risen for you, go somewhere else. It's his day. It's his message. It's his church. And it will not fail us. We need to go back to reading the Holy Scriptures like children. It's a storybook that's true. There's a man who died for me and you and he's been risen this day and we're about to partake in the greatest gift he's given us, his body and blood. Here we have eternal life. We're reminded that we've been put to death and raised to life eternal in our baptism and now we enjoy this as often as we want. Every single day, the simplest of gifts, there is Jesus right in front of us. It may be bread and wine, it might be the person who sits right next to you, but there God's love is poured out for each and every one of us. My prayer through this Easter, this year, every day, is that you are able to not only see Jesus, but hear his message for you. He's pleased with you. He's given you everything. You have his whole kingdom unconditionally, and he requires one thing from you. To believe like a child. Amen. Amen. Would you now please stand and join me in singing hymn number 366, The Strife is O'er, The Battle is Won.
the inside of your bulletin if you'd like to follow along with me. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, on the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let us pray for the whole people of God, our church, our community. Again, those in need this Easter morning. On this holiest... Sorry, I am on the wrong page. Much better. On this resurrection day, let us offer our prayers for ourselves, our neighbors, and our world. No, Aspen. For my sister, Rebecca. My brother in law, John. Brother, Doug. My sister, Doris. Those who are sick or ill and can't be with us this morning, they're shut in at home or at Easter services alone. <coughs> Renewing God, the good news of your resurrection changed the world. Give church leaders and all the baptized the same excitement as the women at the tomb and inspire us to share in this abundant life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustaining God, your creation abounds with signs of new life and budding trees and newborn creatures. Provide fertile soil, ample sunlight, and nourishing rain for the growth of plants, and provide farmers and ranchers with a plentiful harvest and healthy stock. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustaining God, your creation again, needs strengthening and sustaining. Please support all who are vulnerable across the world, especially those in way of war, in way of hunger, famine, terror, pestilence, addiction. Empower government agencies and international organizations to provide for refugees and migrants forced to leave behind their homelands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Encouraging God, you do a new thing among us every day. We pray for those gripped by fear and anxiety or suffer in any way from mental distress. Send us as your healing presence to places of hunger, pain, illness, or overwhelming sorrow, whether it be mind, soul, or body. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Surprising God, you offer endless ways for us to delight in your grace. Give this community of faith a sense of joy and wonder in exploring new avenues of faith, worship, and discipleship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Resurrecting God, you make us alive in Christ. Thank you for blessing each of us to be faithful witnesses who now rest in your promise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer to you these petitions and those we carry in our hearts trusting in your abundant and ever-present mercy. 
Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please take a moment to share the peace of God with your neighbors around you.
the congregation that I need to go to. I won't forget you, Sandy. The body of Christ is for you. And you can either dip this into the cup or you can drink from the cup yourself. Now may the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you under his grace and eternal life. May you this morning on part with his peace and keep it every day. Amen.
He is risen indeed. Oh, hallelujah. May we sing the table prayer? Yes, we can sing the table prayer. Be present at